Okay, in this series of videos, we're going to uh, practice solving problems about uh, random variables and discrete probability distribution topic. All right, I prepared this set of problems for you that hopefully will help you not only uh, practice solving this problem, but I'm sure that they will help you reinforce what you have learned in the topic material itself. All right, so let's start. Okay, the first problem um, is the uh, good warm-up problem, which is very simple, but it's good for you to start with such a problem because maybe it's been a long time you did not uh, do practice problems. So let's start. What do we have here? Uh, obviously, this problem is a long time problem because you can see that the question here in the census was, how many a color TV you have in your household? We know now that uh, this is an obvious uh, item everyone has. Anyway, at that time, it was not that obvious. So these are the answers. You can, um, you, you may be surprised that some uh, people answered that they have nothing. It's a zero, right? How many people answered that? 1,218. And we have 32,000 who answered that they have one set, two sets, we have all these, etc. All right. So the first question is part A. All right. Develop the priority distribution of X, the number of color television per household. It is very important to uh, specify your variable, guys. All right. Always, as we uh, repeated that many times in class always make sure that you are identifying your variable because it will make all the difference in your calculations uh, especially when it's come it comes to probability distribution all right so what do we have we need to find you know probability distribution means we have two columns or two rows in a table uh, where in one row you have the values of x and the other one you have the probability itself okay so Remember, we have the mostly used method is the relative frequency. To find the relative frequency means that I need to divide every value like this one by the total. So let's find the total of these. Here we go. We have 101,501 uh, 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 um, answers. So P of 0 will be equal to 1218, all right, this one, divided by the sum which is 101501 uh, we divide by that and we get 0 0.012 okay p of 1 why don't you do it yourself okay so it's 0 0.319 p of 2 p of 3 p of 4 and p of 5 we find them exactly in the same manner all right now, one thing that I advise you to do uh, in class that you always, whenever you prepare a probability distribution and you find all the probabilities for the different values of X, make sure that these will sum up to one. So yes, I did this check. This is very, very important to make sure that you have an exhaustive list of values for your variable. All right, part B. Once you have probability distribution, you can answer any question about this variable, like the first question, p of x less or equal than 2. What's p of x less or equal than 2? So we're looking for these values, all right? So for x is 0, 1, and 2. Remember, so we call these p of 0 plus p of 1 plus p of 2, meaning that for x to be less or equal than 2, it can be either 0 or 1 or two and using this uh, uh, basic rule of probability so we sum up these probabilities and we get 0 0.705 the second question what the probability that x is greater than two greater than two we are talking about these right so three four and five so here we go it's equal to p3 plus p4 plus p5 what I could have done, because you see here, we can easily see that this condition is the complement of the other condition, the one that we uh, determined in the first part. So I could have found p of x greater than 2 to be equal to 1 minus p of x less or equal than 2. They are complements. 
so we get 0 0.295 finally p of x less than 4 less than 4 that means we're talking about these cases right less than 4 so that's p of 0 1 2 and 3 so here we go p of 0 plus p of 1 plus p of 2 plus p of 3 you sum up these probabilities and we get 0 0.896 so that was a pretty uh, straightforward problem as i told you it's a warm-up so let's proceed with more advanced ones okay, in this problem we're going to do something similar to what we've done in problem 7.8 but we're going to go um, some further steps where we're going to de determine the mean and the variance from the probability distribution of x so here what do we have x is the um, it's the number of employees absent per day okay again remember it's very very important to define your variable so these are the possible values of x what does it mean two for example this is where uh, uh, during the cases when we had two employees uh, absent uh, three three um, absent five employees absent etc and these are the probabilities they are given to us in this uh, problem um, so the first part find the following probabilities the first one is probability that x is between two and five inclusive so two and five so we're looking for these cases and you should know by now that to find these probabilities all what i have to do is to sum up these probabilities right very very simple and straightforward so uh first i i made sure again even though this these this probability distribution was given to us but uh, we're not, not going to lose anything to verify that this is correct okay um the the list is exhaustive so we have sum of probabilities equal to one so to answer the first part p of x between 2 and 5 inclusive that means this is p of 2 3 4 and 5 as i showed you here so we sum up these priorities and we get 0 0.95 priority that x is greater than 5 greater than 5 and here I pay attention to that it's greater not greater or equal okay greater than five that means we are in these cases so it's only in the case where we have six or seven so it's p of six plus p of seven and we get 0 0.02 very small probability then probability that x is less than four again it's not inclusive four is not inclusive so these are less than four so it's the probability that x is three two one and zero all right so i'll put it here and we get 0 0.68 so that was very straightforward guys now we want to find the mean of the population remember what's very important about probability is that it gives you a transition between a sample and the population and the probability distribution represents the population of x so we can find the mean mu of the population remember what's the mean uh, uh formula it's when when we're giving a discrete probability distribution here we go it's sum of x times px so it's the summation of the this product we multiply the value of x by its corresponding value p of x so to do that it's very um very uh useful or it's very um handy to create a new row or new column in your table and i will call it xp of x where i'm going to multiply each value of x by its corresponding value so for the first one it's zero times so it's zero. Second one it's one times 0 0.025 so it's 0 0.025 second one it's two times 0 0.31 so that's 0 0.62 etc and we continue for all the values of x now you see here it's the summation so i have to sum these up and we get 0 uh, 3.066 and this will be our mean here we go now to find we need to find the standard deviation we know standard deviation that's sigma right standard deviation it's sigma and sigma is square root of sigma square which is the variance and we have a nice formula for that sigma square it's equal to summation of x square p of x all right 
minus mu square mu square that or it's the square of the mu that we got before which in our case it was 3.066 so i need to do this for every value of x i need to square it and multiply it by the corresponding value of x itself so how to do that again it would be very um, easy for you to create a new column or a new row in this case call it x squared p of x so for every value of x you square it and you multiply it by the corresponding value of p uh, of, of x uh, the corresponding value of uh, uh, of the probability so for the first one it's zero always second one it's one squared so it's one times 0 0.025 so 0 0.025 second third one it's two squared so it's four right it's two squared so it's four times 0 0.62 and we get 1.24 and we continue in the same manner to get all of these now sigma square has two parts the first part is when i sum up all the x squared times p of x and this is the answer for that it's 10.587 okay so this is the first part and i need to subtract now the squared of the mean which we got in the first part here so doing that we get sigma squared to be equal to 1.177 and remember the question was find the standard deviation now it's very easy because standard deviation is nothing but the square root of the variance and it's 1.85 okay so i hope that was clear enough for you let's move on